Hello, my name is Gretchen Pettis. I'm the entomologist for Biosafe Systems, and I'm here today to talk about one of the most important insect pests of outdoor grown hemp and cannabis, and that is Lepidoptera. And as you know, Lepidoptera are just the larvae of moths and caterpillars, but they can do a lot of damage in a very short amount of time, right towards the end of the season when you're getting ready to harvest. So first I'm gonna tell you about a few species to be aware of. Then I'll describe some of the things to look for, how to scout for these pests, as well as describe a program that Biosafe put together that brings together two biological organisms to help effectively manage this important late season pest of outdoor grown hemp and cannabis. So across the range where hemp and cannabis is grown in the United States outdoors, the most important pest we typically see is the corn earworm. This has been a pest in traditional row crop agriculture for a very long time, and it's no different with cannabis. Um, this is a caterpillar that initially starts feeding on the leaves of the plants, but then climbs up your plants just as it's flowering, going into bud, and starts feeding on those buds. It will bore into them and do a significant amount of damage. The other pest that we often see is tobacco budworm. They can be very difficult to distinguish in the field from one another. It takes an expert, but basically they're doing the same kind of damage. Now, one thing to keep in mind as these caterpillars feed on your buds, not only are they consuming tissue, valuable uh, parts of your plants, but they're also creating wounds where diseases can proliferate. So they're causing damage that way as well. And then another thing to keep in mind with caterpillars is they're just walking stomachs. So what goes in must come out, and what you find is buds that get contaminated with significant quantities of what entomologists politely call insect poop, frass. So insect frass can be a problem when you're going into processing. Another major Lepidoptera species to be aware of is the European corn borer. Much like the corn earworm, it will feed on the the leaves initially, but then this particular caterpillar will bore into the stem and the, um, the fine stems on the side and the major stem and cause weakness, which can uh, cause breakage during strong winds or rains, um, but it also can cause entry points for disease transmission. So how do you know that you have these pests? Well, hopefully you're out in the field scouting your plants, looking at them for diseases, for nutrient deficiencies, and for insects, as well as insect damage. So one of the main things you might see as you're walking through, you might see the caterpillars, unlikely, because when they're young, they're very small. You might see the eggs. Again, they're very small. I've got a, a picture here of what a caterpillar egg looks like. It's just like a little small white dot on a leaf, often on the underside, so you're likely to miss those. And when they're small larvae, you won't see that, but you might see missing leaf tissue. Now that's not such a big deal. Your plants can handle some defoliation from caterpillars. It's when they climb up and get into the buds that that's an issue. Now, initially it might be hard to see them at that point. So as they start getting to be about this size, um, they're gonna start going into the buds. Now, what I typically look for is, remember I said caterpillars, whatever goes in must come out, they're walking stomachs. So you might actually see, before you see a caterpillar, you might see their frass laying on the uh, white plastic sheeting underneath your plant. So as you're driving along, you might see these black specks that are you know, the size of a pencil eraser or slightly smaller, large groupings of them, and that lets you know the caterpillars are there. They're typically pretty well camouflaged. Another thing you might see is that the buds could be turning brown because they've um, either been cons parts of them consumed or diseases have moved in as a result of larval feeding. So looking out for those things uh, might be one helpful way to know that you have Lepidoptera. One of my favorite ways and, and a great way to target your treatments is to use something like trapping. So there are actually specific traps that you can purchase online uh, from outdoor suppliers uh, to trap for corn earworm. They have a, a pheromone lure in them so you know when the moths are flying. So say you know you have cap caterpillars or you've had them in the past that have caused a problem, how do you manage them? There's not a lot of products that you can apply um, in most states 
for outdoor hemp and cannabis. Well, the program that BioSafe put together brings together two bio biological organisms, as I mentioned. The first one is a trichogramma wasp. And this cute little wasp, let me show you a picture here, is minute. It's about the size of a head of a pin. And it parasitizes Lepidoptera eggs. So if you know when the moths are flying, you can purchase these trichogramma wasps and release them in the field. You can see this guy's, re or gal, it's actually a female, uh, is really tiny and they're like uh, seek and destroy missiles. They're very attuned to finding Lepidoptera eggs, parasitizing them, and getting them before those larvae hatch out. Um, so the next thing that you can do, oh, you can purchase these online from suppliers as eggs that are stuck on these little hanging cards. So a biocontrol supplier like Beneficial Insectary, for example, uh, you can buy these sheets of cards and hang them up throughout your crop right when you know that the moths are flying. Now you could use trapping, but you could also belong to grower cooperatives or communicate with your extension service, and they often will have alerts for when moths are flying. So again, these only work on the eggs of Lepidoptera. So if you miss that window, then you'll have to do something else. And that's where the BioSafe product BT Now comes in. So BT Now is made up of a biological material. It's a bacteria naturally occurring in the soil called Bacillus thuringiensis. This is the most widely used biological insecticide in the world. It has a great profile as far as environmental safety and non-target impacts. So uh, it only works on Lepidoptera. It's a sprayable liquid formulation of this bacteria that you can put on your crop. The larvae must eat it. And once they consume it, the alkaline environment in the gut digests that bacteria, causes their guts to have perforation and kills them several days later. But it is, um, it's been used widely since the 1960s and is a highly effective product. Now check with your state to make sure that BT Now is registered there. Um, but going out with the trichogramma when you first see moth flights and then coming in about a week later and starting your applications of BT Now containing that Bacillus thuringiensis kerstaki bacteria is a great way to manage your late season Lepidoptera. Now we formulated our BT now with special UV protectants and easily mixable form. So it lasts a little bit longer on the plants. Uh, and I think you're gonna see that you can get excellent late season Lepidopter control to protect your crop using this system. Thanks, and if you have any questions, contact your BioSafe representative or put a comment down there and I'll be glad to try to answer your questions. Thanks a lot.